here we go, everybody. Here we go. It is time. It is time. A miracle run to the Stanley Cup Final. And we take on the Minnesota Wild. Looking at the journeys to get here, Minnesota beat Chicago in six. They swept St. Louis and then outlasted Nashville. I think it was a 3-1 deficit that they overcame. For us, we beat the Capitals in five, the Rangers in six, and the Panthers in seven. So maybe we're due for a win in four. Who's to say? Like I said, this series does not end if we win the Stanley Cup. It is a two-part series for a reason. Win as much as we can before Sid declines, if not outright retires, and then see what the next era is for the Penguins. <sighs> unreal. Absolutely unreal that we are here. Looking at the team, Jake Gensel, 19 points in 18 games. For as much as we... Uh, bemoaned his inability to hit 30 goals. Things things have gone well. Things have gone well with Jake Gensel in the playoffs. Sidney Crosby, 21 points in 18 games, leading the way for this team. And on that right-hand side, it is Brian Rust with 12 points in 18 games. Obviously got a goal in that cup clincher, or the, uh, I want to say the cup clincher, someone mentioned cup clincher. I want to, uh, at least mention that goal he scored in the conference final clinching game. Second line, Jason Zucker. No goals in 18 games. He does have eight points. I would drop him to the third line if I could. Alongside of Kenny Malkin, who again uh, is our one exception player, to be able to play on a line lower than what their role is. That's part of the challenge of this series. But Gino with 14 points in 18 games has been great. We are going to have to make a decision. I'm probably going to lean towards bringing him back, if we're being honest. 36 goal pace for Gensel in the playoffs. Shut up. And then Jeff Carter. I mean, Jeff Carter scored the goal that sealed the deal. Has seven points in 18 games. At least he's clutch. At least he's clutch. Third line, Aston Reese. This third line has sucked. Two points for Aston Reese and a minus three. He is one of the better defensive forwards in the NHL. But my God, you would not think he'd be that bad offensively. I mean, yes, the shot's bad, the offensive awareness, and the passing's bad. But how do you how do you not at least luck into a goal through 18 games? It's ridiculous. Teddy Bluger, six points in 18 games. He's a minus four. 18 penalty minutes for him as well. I mean, again, he doesn't have that much better offensive stats. And again, for those who missed the explanation of the 99s, you notice how offensive awareness is low because it's a more important stat. I can explain it, but if your instant reaction is that stupid, then uh, you're stupid. And also on the third line, Kasperi Kapanen. He finally scored, but he only has two points in 18 games. There have been five goals from that third line. Four of them are Teddy Bluger. Aston Reese is up at the end of the year. Bluger has an extra year. Kapanen's up at the end of the year. There's a good chance Aston Reese and Kapanen are gone after performances like this. We'll see. But oof. What's his uh, giveaway takeaway ratio? That's a good. That's a good question. I'll look at the regular season first. Um, ninety takeaways to sixty-three giveaways, but still ninety takeaways. Uh, and in the playoffs, fourteen fifteen ratio. So he certainly has not been as good in that regard. Uh, the ninety-nine uh, in deking. Uh, the AI do dumb deeks anyway. It has nothing to do with everyone having a ninety-nine. Like you might see certain players maybe deke a little bit more, but it's a, a very, very minor difference, and much worth it to me to again have people with ninety-nines, but then not have weird award winners, where it's like, oh, cool, that guy has a ninety offensive awareness for no reason. So, fourth line, Drew O'Connor, one point. In 18 games, so we got a point at some point in that Panthers uh, series. Point, 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 point. Sam Lafferty with the three points. And two points for Dominic Simone. Simone's up at the end of the year. Lafferty's up at the end of the year. O'Connor's up at the end of the year. A lot of changes could be coming to this team. Defensively, Brian Dumoulin. Three points, a plus nine. Pretty solid for a strong DFD. He's got one year left at 4.1. Chris Letang, 18 points in 18 games. Might not be what he uh, what he's always been. We'll have a decision to make with him as well. I am leaning towards bringing back Malkin and Latang. 
P.O. Joseph, four points and a plus six in 18 games. Not too bad. He's up to an 83. Some people might disagree with the medium elite, but based off of the trajectory, it's not totally out of the question. Except at the end of the year as well, it's going to be expensive. Will we be able to differentiate Patty Kane from Belmar in a breakaway? Yes. Yes, you would. You know why? Because the abilities. That's why. John Marino, three points and a plus seven. Again, his big new deals kicked in at 4-4. That's a steal. And then Cam Lee has played four games. Uh, no points for him. But that's okay. It's been fine. And then Mark Friedman. <laughs> oh, God. I don't know if we're bringing back Mark Friedman. Tape to tape ability or not. Minus eight, seven points. Oof. Oof. And in goal, Knuckle. What's up, by the way? Philip Lindbergh, the 937 in six games. Again, Jari, 927 in 15. So, I mean, both goalies have been great, but it is Philip Lindbergh's spot to lose with Michael Matheson still being injured. That is our team. That is our roster. We made some tough choices at the start of the year, sitting guys like Marcus Pedersen, uh, Evan Rodriguez, but it's worked out so far. This is what the Minnesota Wild look like. This is what the Wild look like at this stage. Let's see what we got. I went too far. Just thinking Nashville for a second. So does Kirill Capri... <laughs> oh, God. Kirill Kaprizov with 22 points in 17 games, 14 goals. Oof. Centered by uh, Joel Eriksson Ek with 14 points in 17 games. And on the right hand side, Matt Zuccarello, who has 21 points in 17 games. 17 assists for the old Norwegian. Second line, Kevin Fiala, 18 points in 17 games. Jesus. Centered by Nick Bjugstad, who has 11 points. The former Penguin. The scoring is not on high, it's on medium. 11 points in 17 games for Bjugstad. I thought Zuccarello was Swiss. I wanted, I mean, it would have been nice to say Zuccarello, the Swiss mister, but what are you going to do? And Matt Boldy. 13 points, 11 of them goals in 17 games as he ended up making the team. So we know that Boldy and Kaprizov are the goal scorers of their lines. Third line, only four points for Marcus Foligno. He's in a really similar situation to Zach Aston Reese, where he's so good defensively, but the offense just hasn't been there yet. Ryan Hartman, shockingly, only has two goals. Not uh, replicating that IRL efficiency. Uh, six points in 17 games. And Jordan Greenway with six points in 17 games as well. But that's a lot of grit and a lot of defense from that third line. That is a shutdown line. And on the fourth line, Victor Rask with three points, centered by Freddie Goodrow, the former Penguin, of course, with three points. And Nico Sturm with five. That's good. Cody, I don't give a shit about the giveaway takeaway stat. It's bullshit. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter more than any other stat, at least. I get that uh, other people are like, oh, it's going to be my metric for whether or not someone's doing good or not. But it's all, it's a toss-up. It's a coin toss. It's just, you can't control it. Defensively. One of the best pairings in the league. Jonas Brodin. Nine points and a plus 13 next to Jared Spurgeon. I don't know. Do I still have that clip? I think I still have that clip. I, I have to still have the Spurgeon. I think I, I have to still have the Spurgeon. I'm running out of time to find the Spurgeon. Anyway, Jared Spurgeon. Can we see the Jared Spurgeon? Jared Spurgeon, go the way. Watch this right here, this. boy. Watch this here, kid. <laughs> this is put it in. Watch it. It's an out. It's way not go. He plays baseball. I missed that part of Don Cherry. I don't miss the uh, racism, but, you know. So Jared Spurgeon not exactly having the uh, series he could be, but very strong defensively. Second pair is Goligoski with seven points. Again, another very physical type of defenseman. Matt Dumba with five points. Again, surprising. He's got gold thunderclap. And then Dmitry Kulikov with two points next to Jordy Ben, who has four. In goal, Cam Talbot. Only a 909. Yet it's good enough for them to get here so far. That is obviously the key for us here. Can we get to Cam Talbot? Arguably, 
the weakest goalie on paper that we've played against so far. Right? Well, Samsonov. I mean, it's him or Samsonov, but we also avoided Chesterkin, so maybe not. God, imagine if the Rangers had Chesterkin. We might not have made it here. The Stanley Cup Final. The Stanley Cup Final. Minnesota has home ice advantage. Can we get Sid another ring? That is the question. Game one in the state of hockey. Here we go. It begins. First period, and indeed, I'll put the prediction up. Why not? I'll put the prediction up for you guys. Bet correctly this time. For those of you that didn't. God. I'm nervous for this, actually. Again, this is pretty much the only way to set it up to, so it's not like a, a bummer if we win the cup in year one. Because it is definitely trying to extend the dynasty potential. First period of game one, and it's one goal apiece. Erickson Eck and Dominic Simone. They doubled us up in shots, but we are tied on the scoreboard, which is incredibly important. So a big goal there for Dominic Simone. Second period, goal apiece. Jake Gensel on the power play, and Nick Bjugstad. Can't really get the separation. Shots are much closer here, though. Shots are much, much closer. We go to the third, tied at two. A very close first game of the series. Brian Rust scores on the power play. Another power play, Sidney Crosby scores on the power play. Two extra attacker tallies in the third as we continue to trade power play chances. Teddy Bluger makes it 5-2, three power play goals in the third. Kaprizov gets one back, it's 5-3. Three and a half to go. Kaprizov scores again. A minute and a half. We have to watch this. Now, again, someone in chat pointed out that uh, Lindbergh was a Minnesota draft pick. Ends up signing with the Penguins, though. Two goals from Kirill Kaprizov. Sets the stage for a very interesting final minute and a half of game one of the Stanley Cup final. The question is, can we hold on? Can we even get an insurance goal? We've seen some empty netters in hilarious fashion. As Gensel battling down low and gets slashed. What an effort by Jake Gensel to outduel Jonas Brodin. And we're going to the power play with a minute and 18 remaining. A huge mistake from Jonas Brodin. And that might just seal the deal, but we still got a ways to go. That is a huge Huge penalty call, though. It is Crosby against Frederick Goodrow on the draw. Crosby wins it to Carter. Big glove save by Talbot. Huge glove save there. Cam Talbot. Look at the top two goal scorers in the playoffs. It's off outright. Boldy's tied for second. This power play needs to be what helps us seal the deal. Face off one by Minnesota. Dumba. Struggling to get it out. Battle in the corner from what we can tell. Still down low in the corner. Zucker, one-timer for Jeff Carter, and I think he missed. As Dumba has it, final minute of play. Here's Goligoski for the Wild. Over for Erickson Eck. Loses it on the back pressure. Crystal Tang struggling against Erickson Eck. The board play. As Talbot tries to head to the bench. Dumba has three penguins on him, and Carter comes up with it. Empty net. Jeff Carter gets crushed at the blue line. And here's Erickson Eck, 34 seconds now for the Wild. It's five on five. Here's Freddie Goodrow. Loses it. Gensel for Zucker. Now Latang. Empty net still. Latang's pass off the mark. Dumba has it, gets it over to Spurgeon. 17 to play. Goodrow looking, can't throw it on, off the hip from Crosby. Crosby turns it over. Goodrow in a race for the puck, he has it. Eight seconds to go. Latang holding on to it. Puck down low, Spurgeon to Goligoski, save, rebound, shot stopped again by Lindbergh. And the Penguins hold on to take game one. A big save at the death. And we hold on to take game one. 
Whew. God damn. Right here, the big extra save. It was a tired unit out there for the wild at that point. We hold on to win. That is one win down in the cup final. Whew. I imagine Philip Lindbergh up for a star as he should. So game one to the good. And a one nothing lead for the Penguins. We jump into game two. No lineup changes necessary. We're going for it at this stage. First period of this second game, and it's one goal apiece once more. Drew O'Connor and Erickson X. So again, Erickson X offsetting our opening goal. I think it was Dominic Simone that had the uh, goal in the first period of game one. Second period. Drew O'Connor, Evgeny Malkin, and Teddy Bluger. Erickson Eck gets his second in the game on the power play. But it is a two-goal lead for Pittsburgh. Entering the third period. O'Connor and Bluger, the bottom six, chipping in. Two goals this game for O'Connor as well. We go to the third, up by two. Matt Boldy gets one back. Marcus Foligno ties it. At four apiece. Jake Gensel makes it five. Malkin makes it six on the power play. Two goals in under a minute. The Penguins back up by two. As Minnesota's lack of discipline cost them. Three and a half to go. The Pittsburgh Penguins have a two to nothing. Series lead. In the Stanley Cup final. Malkin and O'Connor. Both with two goals. Eric Sinek as well for Minnesota. However, Chris Letang suffers a concussion that will likely keep him out for game number three. It does mean that Taylor Fadoon ends up joining this lineup. We will have him outright replace Latang. I can't bring Joseph up to the second pairing. We got to keep people in their proper position. Joseph only plays the left-hand side. At least according to Cap Friendly. So there you go. Obviously the shootout lines don't matter as much, so we'll just put Brian Dumoulin in there. So the defense for Game 3 will likely be... And we can do that. Let's go Marino Friedman. Oh man. Never mind it. Reset. Hold on. So I can't drop Marino down. It's either a minus one or a minus. Okay, so Friedman's gotta stay down. So it will be Dumoulin Marino, Joseph Fadoon, Lee, and Friedman. It's the best we can do. Lindbergh will stay in. But we are without Crystal Tang, at least until game four at the earliest. But we have a two to nothing series lead and we're going home for game number three. Here we go. Here we go. First period, three to nothing, Minnesota. Ben Fiala Boldy. Seventeen shots to four. As dominant of a first period as you will see. Second period. Is this a team of destiny or what? Marino, Bluger, Crosby, we are tied at three apiece. Oh my god. From 3 nothing down to being tied at 3. Where have we heard that before? Third period. In game 3, Brian Rust makes it 4 unanswered goals for the Penguins. Until Ryan Hartman ties it at 4 apiece. 
Power play for Pittsburgh goes to waste. 11 minutes remaining. Next goal is going to win this bad boy, isn't it? A very important game three. And we are down to the final two minutes. We are down to the final two minutes of game three. A win. And we have a 3 to nothing series lead. A loss in the wild are right back in it. Cape, I love you. So I'm glad you love this. We've had hits and misses watching these overtimes, and it's not even OT yet. Here we go. 2.05 to play in regulation. Minnesota, good chance for Fiala. They had a 3 0 lead in this one. And then at one point, we're trailing 4 to 3. Here's Taylor Fadoon again in the lineup due to the injury to Chris Letang. Kapanen dumps it in. Good play. Aston Reese gives chase. Knocks Jonas Brodin off the puck. Aston Reese is fighting for it. Double team pressure with Spurgeon. And he turns it over on a pass to Fiala. 135 to play. Kevin Fiala into the attacking zone with the moves. Working his way into open space. Drops it back. Boldy keeps it. Spurgeon back to Boldy. Has trouble. Spurgeon to Brodin. Loses it. Kasperi Kapanen. He's got the speed. And all alone. And he gets poke checked by Talbot. Oh, Cappy, not like that. Bluger wins it back. Bjugstad and Bluger behind the back of the net. A realistic Kappen, and there's a holding call coming up on Bluger. A realistic Kappen and breakaway. Here's Boldy. Over for Bjugstad in the traffic, and we finally touch up. A failure. On the breakaway, and Teddy Bluger will get called for a hold behind the Minnesota net. And it's a Minnesota power play. Gensel and Zucker are out there. Goligoski and Ben on the Minnesota defense for the power play. Face off one by Gensel. Marino is able to clear. Miscommunication for the Wild defense. Goligoski will recover, nearly turns it over. Jordy Ben feeds the puck up. Kirill Kaprizov, 40 seconds to play in regulation to game three. Kaprizov loses it. Marino has it, clears it off glass. Whew, no goddamn it. Well, that's what I'm going to be saying about time we lose this game. Goligoski to Zuccarello. Here's Kaprizov. Kirill loses it to Marino again. What a great PK from Marino, but he fails to clear. Gensel battling with Kaprizov. Friedman has it. Feeds it to Zucker. 11 seconds to play in regulation. Zucker looking. Throws it on. Can't get it through. Zucker to Friedman. One timer. He scores. Jake Gensel short handed. And the Penguins are going to win it. Yes. Jake Gensel, baby. Let's go! A one-timer from out of nowhere. The Jake Gensel redemption arc. And the Penguins are going to come back from 3-0 down at the end of the first to win it 5-4 in regulation. And we are one win away from claiming the Stanley Cup. Unreal. Unreal. What a comeback. What a team. A shorthanded winner at the death. Kapanen could have been the hero. But instead, it's Jake Gensel right in Jordy Ben's face. Absolutely incredible. They crushed us in shots, but Gensel is the hero. It won't even let me look at the cap and break away. Crazy, crazy, crazy. So right here, Jason Zucker has three members of the wild on him. And somehow, look at, God, this game sucks. How the hell, the nice no look read, this game sucks. 
God, it's so bad. Three on one. Gets this ridiculous reach for the puck. So fucking stupid. And then wires it over for Friedman, who cuts back. I mean, at least he's looking at Gensel, who's starting to roll out. The pass is ridiculous. Again, how broken is this shit? Look at that. What? <laughs> this game sucks. Oh, it's, I mean, again, we benefited from it, but right here, he, he's clearly passing right there, but instead it goes over here. <laughs> Gensel just fires one. I wouldn't be surprised if it went through Talbot's fucking glove at this rate. Just underneath. What a shit show. What a shit show of a goal. That's the type of goal that causes people to spike controllers in Hut and Ischel. We have a 3 to nothing series lead. 16 goals in three games. And we are one win away from getting Crosby his fourth ring. It's game number four on home ice. Here we go. Can we get it done? First period, one nothing Penguins, and it's Cam Lee. No Chris Letang for game four either, but it's Cam Lee who gets the goal. 49 seconds left in the first. Huge momentum swing there, perhaps. Second period, it's now two to one. Evgeny Malkin gets a goal, but Matt Boldy gets one back on the power play. A 2-1 lead, entering play in the third period. Cup in the building, cup on the line. Five minutes gone. Ten minutes gone, it's still 2-1. Power play for the Penguins. Jake Gensel makes it 3-1. The Pittsburgh Penguins are about four minutes away from claiming yet another Stanley Cup. And again, the fourth in the Crosby Malkin era. On home ice, no less. Three twenty to go. The Wild down by two. How early? Do they pull the goalie? Here's Zuccarello looking. Shot scores! Right in John Marino's face, Matt Zuccarello. Don't go anywhere yet. Don't go celebrating quite yet. This one's not over. Matt Zuccarello with the snipe glove side on Lindbergh. Fifth of the playoffs. This one's not done. A good shot from Zook. That Gensel goal is so much more important. Big fan of the bottom chat, by the way. As the puck goes all the way back beyond the red line. Zook has trouble with Crosby. Couple of mistakes here from the Wild right now. Nerves may be kicking in. Brodeen will bring it back to reset. And here comes Brodeen. Big stretch pass to Matt Zuccarello. Back pressure gets to him. And Marino recovers. Marino. Pass off the mark to Rust. Erickson Eck takes the hit. Here's Zuccarello. Hit by Dumoulin, but he still has it. Zuccarello looking. Another hit by Marino. Erickson Eck stepping in. Erickson Eck shot. Big stop by Lindbergh. And here's Erickson Eck again. Loose puck recovered by Rust. Here's Crosby. Is Philip Lindbergh essentially, uh, you know, essentially the next coming of Matt Murray? <laughs> Tristan Chari, in a way, just constantly having goalies to usurp the next. Or the former, I should say. Two minutes to go. Gensel gives chase against Brodine. He's been out there for a long time. Turns it over. Rust to Gensel. Marino for Malkin. Shot blocked by Brodine. And Fiala rescues the puck. Jared Spurgeon, the captain, loses it. Minnesota struggling to get set up. Loose puck battled on. Rust has it. Malkin knocked off the puck. Brodeen 
Stripped of it. Gensel denied. Rebound, Brodeen. Able to clear it. Here's Malkin. Sends it all the way back. 125 to go. Jake Gensel gets around the defender. Leaves the puck for Malkin. Back to Gensel. Scores! Yes! Jake Gensel! And that should do it. He got redemption. I'm wearing this jersey every stream. Oh, Jake Gensel. Let's go. The Pittsburgh Penguins are going to claim the Stanley Cup in season one. His 13th of the playoffs. Here's Fiala, shot, rebound, puck still loose. Zucker claims it with the goalie pulled. Bjorkstad can't get the shot off. Jeff Carter, Carter for Malkin, can't get it through. And Carter's offside. We are going to win the Stanley Cup in season one. As the cup is, uh, great, great job, EA, great job. You're doing good. Good work. Come on, man. It's so simple. How is that even fucked up? Come on, guys. You're better than that. At least I thought you were. Jesus. Please. Like, how? How do you explain this shit? So many glitches. <sighs> 55 seconds. They pull the goalie. Dominic Simone. At least gets it out of the zone. Spurgeon for Friedman. Friedman shrugs off the pressure. Mark Friedman leading it down. He'll dump it in. Here's Matt Dumba. They're down by two with 35 to go. Nick Bjugstad for Jared Spurgeon. Avoids traffic. Spurgeon to Fiala. Great back pressure by O'Connor. Here's Simone. 25 to go. Dominic Simone seals the deal with the empty netter. The Pittsburgh Penguins are going to win the Stanley Cup. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. We beat Washington. We survived the New York Rangers. We reverse swept the Florida Panthers in the conference final. And I said maybe it was time for a sweep. And indeed... We are going to sweep the Minnesota Wild. We have won a series along the way in every way you possibly can. Four, five, six, and seven games. The Penguins get it done. Cup number four for Crosby and company. Philip Lindbergh gets it done. Unreal. A cup in season one. Even my light's dying. It's like, yes, job done. God damn. I cannot believe this team just did that. We sit there. We don't use Pedersen. We don't use Rodriguez. We give ourselves these weird parameters. I haven't even been able to put a, a spin on the team aside from those parameters. And this is where we're at. We have some big decisions to make this offseason. Sidney Crosby and Marcus Foligno sharing a moment. Freddie Goodrow, one of a few uh, former Penguins on that team. I have no idea who gets the con Smythe. Crosby, Gensel, Lindbergh. There's some options. There are definitely some options. And it will be Jake Gensel. Con Smythe winner, Jake Gensel. The jersey was good luck. Unreal. He goes from being the bane of our existence, 29 out of 30 goals needed, 
But we win the con smite. Imagine if we landed on, like, trade Jake Gensel instead of the AI draft punishment. Imagine. This would be devastating. But instead, it's an AI draft and we're feeling okay. Sidney Crosby. For the fourth time in his career. Raises the Stanley Cup. Who will he hand it off to? I don't know if it'll be Gino or who, but... And it's going to be Brian Rust. Skate right over that carpet, big boy. Beautiful. God, season one. Can we get it done? I don't even know who has it. Teddy Bluger. Theodore Schbluga. God damn, man. Season one. Season one. And we got the job done, dude. That's crazy. Three Stanley Cups and, uh, or Stanley Cups in three different decades. Damn. Philip Lindbergh. Of course, I haven't customized his face yet, but that's okay. Tristan Jari had a 927 save percentage, and we switched over to Philip Lindbergh, and Lindbergh did well enough that he was worth keeping as the starter. Crosby and Malkin side by side for a fourth Stanley Cup in team history. Well, not team history, obviously, but in their history together. Obviously, we uh, don't uh, <laughs> dispatch the Lemieux. Incredible. We sweep the Minnesota Wild Wolverine. Thank you for being a person of your word. Appreciate that, Gifted. I mean, Crosby had 27 points in 22 games and didn't, uh, didn't even, didn't even get the consummate. That's crazy, dude. Unreal. Washington in five, the Rangers in six, the Panthers in seven, and then we sweep the Minnesota Wild. And it might not be the only other cup we uh, acquire for Sid. Who's to say? Who is to say what the next step could be here? Gensel and Crosby were tied in points. It could it was a complete toss-up. Malk in the 18 points in 22. Russ did great. I mean, Zucker, 22 games, no points. Fucking hell. How is that even possible? He's got one year left at 5.5. .5. Jeff Carter might be hopefully ready to retire. Kasperi Kapanen was outscored by Drew O'Connor. Five points between Kapanen and Aston Reese. One goal. Abysmal. Abysmal. And defensively, Chris Letang. I mean, again, he didn't play in the final two games. Massive loss for us. But he's still great. Cam Lee, two points in eight games. Taylor Fadoon was fine. Stepping in. And then in goal. Lindbergh only finished with a 9-1-1. But he was 8-1-0. Jari had a 9-30. But 8-1-0 for Philip Lindbergh. They split the wins. Which is crazy. The Pittsburgh Penguins win the season one Stanley Cup. There it is, the Cleveland Monsters taking home the Calder Cup. To look at the awards and officially wrap up season one. Very, very nice indeed. And Cleveland. Uh, winning their uh, second Calder Cup in five years. Of course, they were the Lake Erie Monsters. Toronto won the Presidents. So much for that. Brad Marchand won the Art Ross, which will piss a lot of people off, but he's on that top line. Sidney Crosby won the Heart. Who needs the Con Smythe when you when you win another Heart? Who needs it? Who needs it? Kel McCarr wins his first Norris. Lady Bing to Panarin. The Calder does go to Lucas Raymond, no surprise there. Con Smythe, as we knew, to Jake Gensel. Jack Campbell won the Vesna. 
The Leafs probably won't have the cap space to re-sign him. He also won the Jennings. Mikey Anderson, the Bill Masterton. Minnesota's coach won the Jack Adams. So much for that. Ryan O'Reilly wins another Selkie. Sidney Crosby, the Ted Lindsay. And the Rocket, Richard to Austin Matthews. What a season for Sidney Crosby. A heart and the Ted Lindsay. In the AHL, Hendricks LaPierre put up the most points. He'll probably end up being Rookie of the Year as well then. Uh, he was league MVP. Matt Molson scored the most goals. That Hershey team was ridiculous. Hendricks LaPierre was the top rookie. Uh, Brogan Rafferty, top defenseman for the San Diego Gulls. Top goaltender, Ilya Konovalov. And Yegor Chinnikov was the MVP of the playoffs. Season one. In the books, a Stanley Cup added to the trophy case. But again, just because we've won a cup doesn't mean we're stopping. The reason why I wanted to use Pittsburgh was to see if we could get Sid another cup or two, maybe more, and then move on into the next era of the Penguins. <sighs> A Stanley Cup in the books. Just how the hell did we <laughs> A reverse sweep to a sweep. That's one of the craziest cup runs we've ever had.